Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to be talking about selections, layers and layer masks in Photoshop. This one is awesome. Theme tune. Going backwards today. Okay, so selections and layer masks. These are massively important inside Photoshop. So this is part of my Photoshop training course. If you want to download all of the videos or practice along with me with all the images that I use, then head over to photosincolor.com and you can download them all. So here we go. What are layer masks, okay? Well, and selections. So imagine this. You, I'm gonna hit record. Oh, imagine this, you're right here and you've made an image. This is your image, like so. So this is what you've created. Now what you want to do is make an edit with the middle of it. So how do you do that? Well, you can select a section in the middle. So let's select the middle section of this. So now you're just gonna select this. So this is what you make with this selection and then you can make some other edits. So let's go in and make some other edits on this in the opposite direction. So these are the edits you've made, which are great. Now when you unselect, you're now left with this. So it's obviously just edited the section in the middle. It looks like that, okay? But then what happens if you wanna go back and make any of those edits? That's now stuck, you can't get rid of this. So then there's another way of doing it, is you instead can put that selection onto a new layer. So here we go again, you go like this, you have your image that you've made, and then what you want to do is you wanna take this and you wanna take a section of it, like so, because you just wanna edit this bit, okay? That's really great. So you're gonna take that, it's on a different layer, and you're gonna make edits on this. Okay, so again, that goes in the opposite direction to show you. Great, so you made edits on this, and you've not managed to go over the edges. So this is really great. So now you can keep on making the edits on this layer, but the problem is you can't now add any of this and make it look like it was part of the same thing on the other layer. So that's also a problem. So what do you do? Well, this is where the magic of layer masks come in. So what happens is with a layer mask, is you make a selection. So for example, this is your image like this. No idea if this makes sense. This is your image like this. Now what you do is you mask out a section of that. So let's say, I need to draw another one for this. Let's say this is the same thing. What you do is you mask out a section. So you go in and you mask out this section. So what you've done is you made this as a selection. So say this fits on here, lines up pretty perfectly. So this here, you make that a selection and then what you do is you just create a mask. So what that means is you can now go in, you can make an edit onto this section here and you can go, okay, that's really great because essentially it's just from this section. But you might say, oh, well actually, I want more than just this, this selection. I want to add some more. Well, that's fine. Because you've masked it, which is this, which is left over, you can just go in and say, well, I want to add this bit to it. And now you can add it, and now you've got more of that selection involved. Or you could say, I want to use less of it and only mask that amount out. Now, I have no idea if any of that made any sense whatsoever. So let's jump inside Photoshop and let me see if I can explain to you in there. Here we go. That was probably really confusing. Here we are, this is our single layer that we're gonna work with today. We have lots of areas and masks that we have that this can make sense of. So, they're all um, iPads and stuff like that. So first of all, what we've got is our selection tools. So for this one today, let's for example go in and we'll just use the quick select because I'm just gonna demonstrate what this is. So essentially I'm gonna use, I'm gonna have a tutorial on quick select, but essentially I've made this into a selection, this screen, the dark area. So that's really simple. So you can see the selection by the marking marching ants and also by hitting Q on the keyboard means that it's gonna bring up this mask here and you can see what I have selected and that's in red. Now if I, if I wanted to select the outside of where I selected, all I have to do is go Command, Shift, 
I. Now, whatever is selected, okay, I can now do things with. If it's unselected, I can't do anything with it. So for example, let's take the pen tool, let's select a bright color like pink, and now what I'm going to do is I'm literally, let's make this smaller, okay? And now I can see it's not going on my screen. Or if I hit Command Shift I to invert, now I can go the other way and I'm painting on the screen. Now, the problem is this. If I deselect, okay, by hitting Command D, what I now have on this layer is it's now one single layer. So let me duplicate that by hitting Command J so it's no longer a background layer. And now you can see it's all one layer, so I can't go in and make those edits. So let's try something else instead. So we have this selection. I've selected the inverse by hitting Q. You can see it's the outside of this. Now let's go and uh, Command J, so we're gonna make a new layer on this. So if I hide the background layer, you can see we've got rid of the middle. Now this is now absolutely fantastic because what I can do is I can take this pen tool and I can paint on the background layer, which is fantastic, which is where that screen is. But the problem is here, it's now all over my screen. So on this bottom layer, I now can't make any edits on that. So what is it that you can and can't do with this? Well, instead, what I'm gonna do is create what's called a layer mask. So what I'm gonna do is come down here where this, this little circle and hit mask. And now what you can see is it's created this area here. Now, importantly with masks, if you hit Option or Alt and click on the mask, it's gonna show you the mask. Anything in white can be seen, anything in black cannot be seen. That's the basics of it. So, let's make this really simple to see here. We're gonna go Command Shift N, okay, for a new layer. We're gonna use the Fill tool here and we're gonna fill it all in pink. We're gonna move this layer to the bottom. So now you can see by hitting option, wherever it's black, you cannot see what is on this layer. So you can see what's underneath, which is pink. Now, if I click on this up here, command I and invert this, and what you see now you can just see the screen and everything else has disappeared, okay? So if that's confusing you, let's try it a different way. We'll keep this pink, and now let's keep this layer mask selected Let's hit, hit Alt and click it. And now let's take a brush, leave it on black, and we're gonna paint on this. So what we're gonna paint is a scribble over here. Now, when I come back to this, click Alt and click it, you can see that this is now, because it's where it was white and um, black, you can see the pink through it. So as I scribble all over this, you can see what's happening. So you can see by using masks, and if I was to paint white on this area, you can see that's gonna go away. So by using masks, I'm allowing myself to put things in and out as many times as I want. Now you might be thinking, okay, but what's the use of that? Well, there are many, many uses of that. Let's first of all, let's put something on this screen. So we're gonna go and grab another image over here. This one just here that we've used in other tutorials. And we're gonna drag and drop it into here. Now, I'm just gonna right click this and I'm gonna hit rasticize layer so it's no longer a smart object because I don't need it to be that. Now, I have this here. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn it into, I'm gonna reduce the opacity so I can see through it. And now I'm gonna hit Command T, which means that I can transform this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it, okay, and I'm gonna line it up with the bottom of the screen. Like so. And then I'm gonna say, well, I want her to be on the screen somewhere-ish like this. But I can see that she's not in line with the screen, so again, I'm gonna make this larger so that she fits onto the screen. And then I'm gonna command, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna select perspective. And by moving this around, what, I, what I'm able to do is I can make sure that she's actually lining up to the screen. But on this side, she's quite a long way off. So in fact, what I need to do is go into skew and I need to bring the bottom out and I need to bring the top in. And by doing this, I'm essentially adding perspective to this image and making sure that she fits. Now that pretty much works. Let's move her down into the image. 
All right, I do need to go out a little bit. Now I'm not gonna do this completely perfectly, but you can kind of get the gist of this. I'm just gonna come all the way out because I need to make the bottom wider for this to actually fit in. There we go, so that all works. Hit enter or return. And now what I'm gonna do, bring back the opacity to 100% and watch this. Now when I take this image here and put it underneath that, you can see that now she appears that she's on that screen. And that really is how amazing selections and layer masks are. So let's do the same process and let's do it a little bit faster so you can see how I do it. Select this layer again, just here. So this is the main layer with all these objects on. I'm gonna go for quick select and I'm gonna select this screen. So it's gonna select all of that really quickly. Now I'm gonna select my layer mask and I'm gonna to go to the brush tool and I'm gonna paint in black, select black so that it disappears. And I can see I've got this image of her in the background again. So now I'm gonna deselect by hitting Command D. So now I have no selection. I'm gonna come back down to the image that I had before and I'm gonna go Command J to duplicate it. So now I have two versions of that. And now by using the Move tool, which I can get to by selecting V, I can now move the other copy of this image down here. So let's shrink it down. And I'm not gonna do it perfectly, but you can imagine that now she's gonna be put on that screen as well. So now we can see really quickly we're building up this image. And now let's repeat this item one more time so you can see how quickly this can be done. I'm selecting the area of the screen and then I'm gonna select the brush tool, making sure I'm on the mask over on this side. And then I'm gonna paint it out like so. Come down to the one of Alessandra Cerrone, Command J. Oh, I haven't got it selected. So I must be in the move, move tool. Okay, sorry, D, command deselect so that I don't have a selection and I'm gonna go command J. Now I'm gonna take the image and drag it up here. Now, I'm not gonna do this perfectly, but what I am gonna do is make sure that I have her selected and I'm gonna rotate around. And because it's a lot bigger screen, I'm gonna make it nice and big, like so. And you can see just those buttons you can see on the image. Now I have an issue, because what you can see, this all looks great, but what we don't have, well, so what we do have is she's over the top. So there's a few different ways that I can get around that. Let's hide this layer, like so, and now we can see what those other images are doing. Now I've got a few ways of doing this. I can move this layer to the bottom, like so, and that definitely is gonna fix all of my problems but sometimes that isn't gonna work. So let's leave this one at the top where it's in the, problem, in, in the way. Now what's really simple, if I open up this one here, I know that I only need this selection. So let's just use the lasso tool. Let's select this area very roughly. Now when I get rid of this, I can see that this is the only area that I need. So let's click on this layer and let's hit layer mask one more time and it's gonna mask out the rest of that image, leaving only that. And now when I select this, now it's not a problem and it looks absolutely amazing. So you can see that very quickly, all I've had to do to make this work, let me just move that into position, there we go, is I can make selections very quickly and then I can use layer masks and layers to create this amazing effect. Now, what I would recommend doing is going through and practicing this and making different selections with different tools. So for example, the magic wand tool, you might be able to use, oh, make sure you've got the right layer selected. Command D to deselect. And the magic wand I may select up here. And you can see that I can use it to actually select this item up here pretty quickly because it's all the right color and I'm just adding it all in there. And then I could do something completely different to this. So for example, for this, I can go Command J, so put it on a new layer, that item. And then what I can do is essentially change my color balance for just that item by clicking that on and now that's gone red. So what I did there was I added a different color tone um, here, I use color balance and then I locked it just to the layer below by using this button here. And now whatever I change here is only going to make that selection change just there. 
amazingly powerful. And I can actually put that underneath here. So now it will affect only, say, the, the images, which makes it really powerful. So by rearranging my layers, I'm able to do all sorts of different clever things. So that there is a brief overview of exactly how selections are made and how they work with layers and layer masks. Now I'm gonna do lots more tutorials on this to go into more detail for how each one of these elements works. But that was a brief overview of the power of selections and masks in Photoshop. Now if you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel. I have loads more tutorials coming on Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography in general. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune. Boop, 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 boop.